Today we're talking back pain. And for most people, it's one of two culprits. It's either positioning or it's not knowing how to use the right muscle group or a combination of the two. So first, we're gonna talk about activating and using the right muscle group. It's really common when people are experiencing back pain that they are not activating or using their glutes the way that they should be. So that means that they're relying on their back to do all of the work instead of recruiting their glutes to help them with this movement. Our glutes are a very, very strong muscle and we wanna make sure that we are using those to support our back and not relying on our back to do all of the work. So I'm gonna give you guys a few exercises on how that you can prime and activate your glutes, focusing on that mind-muscle connection so we can help take away that back pain. If you know that you are gonna be doing an exercise such as a deadlift or a back squat, something that is gonna recruit your posterior chain, we wanna make sure our glutes are firing and we wanna go ahead and create that mind-muscle connection. We can do that by priming the muscle group with exercises that are gonna activate and engage those muscles so it's gonna help us be ready and warm for those loads that we're lifting. First one that I'm gonna give you guys is super simple. It's gonna be a clamshell lying on our side. So all we're gonna do is take a monster band. From here, we're gonna put it around our knees it can be just above or just below. We're just gonna lie onto our side. You can use that hand right behind your head if you would like. And then from here, I'm gonna focus on using my glute right here to lift the outside of my knee. So I'm just gonna externally rotate till I feel my glute take on and then come back down. And I'm gonna go through 12 to 15 reps here, focusing on taking my mind muscle connection, feeling that muscle engage, and then come back down. Our next drill is super simple and super effective. It's really gonna isolate your glutes, which is what we are trying to target so we are warm and primed for the hinging movements. All we need is a wall, and that wall is gonna help us hold accountable when it comes to these sideline abductions. So I'm gonna come down onto a wall. From here, I wanna have the three points of contact. My head, my back, and my heels are in contact with the wall. So I'm not away from the wall, I'm touching the wall on my side. Shoulders are stacked, hips are stacked. I'm gonna think about lengthening. So I'm pushing my heel away to create space in my hip, roll my toe up towards the ceiling, and then I'm going to lift. So what that's doing is keeping my heel pressed back into the wall so my glute is on fire, and then I'm gonna lower back down. Every time we can create that length by driving our heel away, flipping that toe up, and then lifting all the way up. This is really going to fire your glute need, and it's gonna give you a nice good burn. I recommend hitting two sets of five to 10 reps per leg. Another drill that we love for isolating the glutes and the hamstrings to prime you for hinging so that we don't use our back is going to be a reverse plank with our feet elevated. You could use a chair, you could use whatever you have, but we want those heels to be slightly elevated. The higher this is, the harder it's gonna be. So if you wanna start with stacked plates, you could also do that. Then we're gonna come down into this position, having our feet on the bench. So I'm pushing my heel through the bench. I like to take my hands up just to keep them pointed towards the ceiling. I'm gonna think about squeezing my glutes as I extend. So where I am feeling this all through my glutes, all through my hamstrings, keeping my midline nice and tight. Then I'm gonna try to stay there for 30 to 60 seconds plus, focusing on feeling the tension in my glutes and in my hamstrings. We don't wanna compensate. So as soon as we feel like we have to come down, that's fine, we can go ahead and lower ourselves down. For the holds, I would start conservative. So start at a 15 second hold, start at a 20 second hold. Stay there until you start to feel stronger and then continue to build up. Don't dive into a 45 to 60 second hold right off the bat. The next drill that I really love is going to isolate each individual leg. So it's gonna be a single leg glute bridge focused on getting the hip extended. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the same thing. I'm gonna elevate one foot up, I wanna take a minute to thank today's video sponsor and supporter of our channel, Element. Element is something that I use every single day and it's made with a science-backed formula to help you stay hydrated. It contains 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means no junk, no sugar, no gluten, no coloring, no BS. 
Electrolytes are responsible for hundreds of functions in the body, including hydration. And water alone is not enough. Element can help prevent things like headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, and sleeplessness, which can all be symptoms of electrolyte deficiency. Right now, Element is offering my subscribers, that's you all, a free sample packet with eight single serving samples. This is an awesome way to try all eight flavors or share with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com forward slash Christy Ermo. This deal is only available to you guys, my subscribers, if you click the link below. D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com forward slash Christy Ermo. K-R-I-S-T-I-E-R-A-M-O. Now back to today's video. My other knee into my chest. From here, I'm gonna think about driving my heel through the bench, squeezing my glute to extend the hip. So when I talk about extension from the knee through the hip, and the shoulder should be one good straight line. So I'm staying nice and tight. I'm gonna use this hamstring and glute to get my hip into extension. Nice and controlled. Then you can switch legs. I would aim for five to eight reps per leg. You might notice one feels a little bit easier than the other. That's pretty common. We're gonna to touch on some exercises that tend to cause people lower back pain or some of the more common movements that cause people lower back pain. But first we're gonna talk about positioning. A lot of times people don't maybe have the best understanding of where their body is in space. And we're gonna go over a tactile cue that's gonna show you where your body is in space to where we can avoid bending, which is a lot of times what puts the workload on our lower back and hinge where we can get our hips back and make our glutes and our hamstrings do the majority of the work. Anytime we're hinging, so if we were gonna be setting up for a deadlift or something where we're gonna be using our glutes and our hamstrings, if my hips don't move, I'm putting the workload on my lower back. If I start with maybe a slump into my knees, like I'm getting ready to do something and I bend forward, my chest comes comes forward and my hips stay in the same spot. That means that I'm very likely gonna put the workload on my lower back. If I hinge, I've got that same stop into my knees, but instead of just dropping my chest forward, the thing I'm focusing on is pushing my hips back behind me. So when I push my hips back behind me, now I'm loading up my glutes and my hamstrings, which is our posterior muscle group that should be carrying the workload. So again, the difference between bending forward and hinging back is the primary difference that's gonna help us activate our glutes and our hamstrings and take the workload off of our lower back. The other thing that's gonna play a big part in our lower back pain is our upper back position. So if I'm not able to keep a neutral upper back, meaning that my back is nice and flat, if I start reaching or rounding forward, that's also gonna take the workload off of my glutes and my hamstrings. I need that neutral back to where I can feel my glutes and my hamstrings and I'm actively going to be squeezing them to come up. When I start reaching or rounding, I'm again taking the workload off my posterior chain. So now we're gonna to touch base on a positional cue or a tactile cue to show us where our body is in space. So a lot of times people feel like they're hinging and they feel like they're pushing their hips back, but they're really not. So this is one of my favorite drills to give us a little bit of a mind-body connection on what our body's actually doing in space. So if I go all the way up against the wall and then I take one step out, so my heel is about where my front toe is of my foot that's still touching the wall, I'm gonna bring my opposite foot out next to meet it. I'm gonna get into a good position, stop into my knees, and now the only thing I'm gonna think about is pushing my hips back behind me. The byproduct is gonna be that my chest is gonna come forward and my goal is gonna be to touch my hips or my butt to the wall behind me. So once I have that soft bend, I'm pushing my hips back behind me, I'm finding that wall, and then I'm gonna actively squeeze to bring myself back up. That for most people is further back than what they think it is. And the thing that we wanna avoid doing is squatting down to the wall. So once I have that soft bend in my knee, I'm no longer gonna move my hips up or down, I'm only moving them back behind me. So again, what I'm trying to avoid doing is squatting to find the wall. Once I have that soft bend, I'm gonna lock my knees in place and the only thing that I'm doing with my hips, pushing them back behind me. I want my chest facing the ground. That is a good indicator that I'm in a good position. I should feel a good stretch in my hamstrings and I'm actively gonna squeeze my glutes and my hamstrings to bring my chest back up. Two more pointers that can let you know if you're in a good position is one, if we've got vertical shins. If my knees are coming over top of my toes, that likely means that I'm squatting down or I'm on my forefoot trying to kind of use my quads rather than my glutes and my hamstrings in an exercise that we should be using our glutes and our hamstrings. The other thing that we want, we want our chest facing the ground when we are in hinging position. If my chest is up tall, that is another indicator that I'm probably not in a good position. Once we have a good feel for where our body is in space, we can translate this into some really good resistance 
hinging drills, which means now we're applying the mind muscle connection using our glutes with a little bit of feedback with hinging. So using a band, using a kettlebell, things along those lines. So the first one I'm gonna show you starts on our knees. This is the most basic. And we should feel our glutes stretch as our hips come back and then squeeze our glutes to help us get back to our tall kneeling position. So the way it's gonna work, I'm just gonna hook a band somewhere between my knee and my ankle, right in the middle of my shin. I'm gonna come down into the band. It's gonna sit right at my hip crease. So I'm gonna come out where there's some tension on this band, thinking about keeping my spine neutral so my back is flat, no rounding in my upper back, keeping my midline tight. I'm going to hinge by pushing my hips back over my heels, letting my chest come forward. To get out of this position, I'm gonna think about squeezing my glutes to open the hips back up. So this is the most basic to where I can keep my spine nice and neutral, loading my glutes and squeezing. So that's a really great way to get some feedback. We can make this a step harder by coming to a standing position. Now from here, we're gonna mimic what Patrick just did with the wall but this band is pulling me backwards. So I have to keep my midline nice and tight so I don't lose my balance. My weight is in my heels, so I could wiggle my toes at any point. My spine is neutral, my midline is tight. I'm gonna engage my glutes. I'm gonna gently let this band pull my hips back as if I'm reaching to touch the wall behind me. And then I'm gonna squeeze my glutes to stand tall. So we're taking the drill Patrick just showed you just a one step further with a little bit of resistance. Notice my shins are staying vertical. As I push my hips back, I feel my hamstring stretch. I squeeze my glutes to get out of this. What I am not doing is coming all the way down, right? We just wanna feel the glutes kick on and find the tension in our hamstrings. Here's another progression that's gonna really help us keep our shoulders pulled back and down so we can keep that nice neutral spine and we can focus on a good solid hinge, keeping our shins vertical. So all you're gonna need is a kettlebell. I would start with a lighter kettlebell as you get more comfortable, you can increase the weight. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this kettlebell behind my back and I have both hands on the kettlebell. I'm gonna find my deadlift stance, meaning my feet are underneath of my hips. And then instead of letting my shoulders be pulled forward, I'm gonna think about nice proud chest, pulling my shoulders back and down and staying active with my upper back. In this position, I'm just gonna focus on exactly what we did with the band. I'm gonna reach my hips back, feeling my hamstrings engage, keeping my chest nice and proud because I'm keeping those shoulders pulled behind my back and squeeze my butt and stand. So pushing those hips back, driving through the foot and squeezing the butt. Throughout this entire movement, my weight is in the heel, not in the ball of my foot. So it's really important when we do this that we don't want to be pressing through our toes. Yes, I have three points of contact, but the bulk of my weight is towards my heel. That's going to help me activate my posterior chain. So for most people, it's the hinging movements that cause lower back pain. Sometimes it's during the exercise, sometimes it's the next day or days after. Anything where we're bending over to pick something up or an exercise where we're bent over. So sometimes that means going lighter on the weight to be sure that we're using the right muscle groups. Maybe you can deadlift 100 pounds more, but by doing that, you know your back's gonna bother you. If we can deadlift a much lighter weight, but be sure that we're in perfect position and that we're using our glutes and our hamstrings, we're gonna build up our ability to use the right muscle groups prevent lower back pain, and in the long run, we'll end up being able to either deadlift or whatever the movement is, much more weight. But a big point for us is not that these exercises are bad. Deadlifts aren't dangerous, uh, snatches, cleans, dumbbell movements, anything where we're bending over or picking something up is necessary, and it's something we're gonna have to do for the majority of our lives. So being able to do that in a good position and use the right muscle groups is the solution. Avoiding the movements isn't necessary, so don't be afraid to deadlift, don't be afraid to do any of these movements. Uh, just work on the things that are going to enable us to use the right muscle group, because in the long run, that's gonna benefit you much more. So a couple major takeaways. One, work on your positioning. Know where your body is in space. Two, if we're going to be doing an exercise or if there's something that day that you know tends to maybe bother your back a little bit, make sure that we're priming the glutes and the hamstrings to where we can get a little bit of blood flow, we can make a mind-body connection, and that's gonna make it easier to use those muscle groups as the weights get heavier. We love the art and science of programming. So one way we like to incorporate this into our programs is we might do an EMOM. The odd minutes may be a movement such as a curtsy lunge. So we are targeting the glute meat. We are getting it to fire. We are activating it so you can really feel it during those curtsy lunges. The even minute might be the deadlift. Now that we've activated the glute meat and our glutes during the curtsy lunges, you can really feel them during your sets of deadlifts. Going back and forth for a 10 minute EMOM, so it's 
five sets of curtsy lunges and five sets of deadlifts working up in weight so we can apply that activation and it feels like to use the proper muscle groups while we're lifting. We have people start at the gym all the time that either had lower back pain or they're nervous that they're gonna have more lower back pain from doing things like deadlifting or hinging. And it is amazing that when you take the time to learn how to use the right muscle groups, and be in good positions, it becomes a non-issue for almost everyone. So it is something that's avoidable, it is something that's preventable, and it's honestly not the most complicated. Working on your positioning and learning how to use your glutes and your hamstrings for most people solves almost all of these problems. If there's other movements you guys want us to go over, if you have questions about other things that maybe hurt, whether that's knees, uh, whatever it is, we're happy to go over some pointers or things that we find that benefit people to where that you don't have to be in pain, whether that's inside or outside the gym. If you wanna learn more about our programs and the things that we do, we'll put the link below. We'll see you guys in the next video.